Welcome to RimWorld! This is Jack B. Flippin' and Funky Monkey playing on Mission Reloaded Gaming, and we're in a game of RimWorld. This is like, what, I don't know, episode... It's, it's the episode that we talked about Star Wars beforehand. Yes. The episode... Yes. Well, I'm going to probably put this at the beginning and then put the Star Wars after it, but... Yeah. Here, here's the real question. Do you think, given the chance, the previous director, um, the uh, director of the second movie, would make a decent third movie? As long as he, you know, explained himself. I, I don't think so, because he's just very... He was throwing things around all over the place. There was no continuity. The fact that he thought the Haldo slice was a good idea. The fact that, like, the only thing he brought to it was, like, explaining the fact that fighters can go through shields for naval warfare and the reason you have them. Like, it showed that as an aspect, which makes sense now. However, and it's yep. very annoying that his whole plot of let's kill Snoke and then have the love story. I'm like, no, because you're just going to do the teeny bopper love story in the third movie. Like they pulled off for freaking uh, was it the Harry Potter movies where like, oh, we need to have a relationship quarrel happen now in the middle of a war. Like, really? No, we really don't. So it's like RimWorld, to be honest. Well, it's like people want more RimWorld, but they want to they want to push Instead of the characters having an organic passage of time and characters working together to create this natural type of relationships, they forced them. Because who wanted Ron and Harmony to get together? No one. We wanted, you know, freaking Harry Potter and Harmony to get together. Not Harry Potter getting together with one of Ron's like, younger sisters, who in the first movie is a baby, and the last thing you want to do is sexualize that character. She was like six, and he was like 11. Which is makes sense, but yeah. But then here we go, with the Star Wars thing. You know, he was like six, she was fourteen. Can we make it any more obvious? No, we can't because that's not. Mm -mm. <laughs> We're not thinking of their relationship at this point. Like he obviously falls in love with her oh. because oh crap. Um, three desperados, six gunslingers, one rustler, and two sharpshooters. We need walls. We need our walls. No, we don't. Sorry, man, you're dead. Video so editing at its finest. Talking about video I, editing, we're talking about the stupid Star Wars movies. Yes, and I imagine Jack will cut that out because, you know. I love Star Wars. Yeah, but the community behind it is so septic on anything anyone ever uh, says. Especially no, if it's as long board. as you mention the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, we're all cool. No, that's just Facebook moms and your No, actually, and m almost everyone can universally accept the fact they like the Mandalorian and it's because they're basing it off of good old West like every episode you can tell they're pulling heavy story plot lines from like the good bad and the ugly the man with no name uh, a lot of spaghetti westerns and it, so it, space is Space is at its best as a Western, funnily enough. Well, it's because there's a lot of vast space between places and people are out there trying to build a life and survival. It's the same story. A good space opera can be fit into any... All right, so pretty much if you have a good story, it can go anywhere. It can go in the medieval ages, it can go in the future, it can go in the past, it can go in the present. That's one reason, like, Dune really works, because it literally is a feudal lordship system in space, but it doesn't have to be in space. You don't have to be on a planet called Arrakis. It could be an island. It could be a nation. It could be a rock. It could be a mountain. It could be, you know, it doesn't matter. It's because location doesn't necessarily matter as long as you have a good plot. By the way, have I told you about the, um, about, oh, shit. Shit. Trying to resync. Hold on. They t have they told you about the uh, my uh, cur Vegas? my current RimWorld playthrough? No, you haven't. One word. I have one word for you. Cocaine. Dun, 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 dun. Anyway, only reason that my current campaign is actually doing prospering in any sort of is because literally like the second day. There was like a patch of ten. There was like ten lines of cocaine that trap randomly from the sky. <laughs> Bitch, I then, space cocaine, which I literally used to. Um, one of my char I had one of my characters snort it. I mean, well, actually, I it's a it was I'm doing a, it's a new, it's a naked brutality run, which is the <laughs> only. So, my guy high on cocaine. I have his ass on cocaine. I might add. 
goes out and ganks three fucking people with the laser pistols with the bow and arrow. Downs one, stakes his knife, and then stabs the other two. Holy crap. And then essentially lives the next week in game off of snorting nothing but cocaine just so he doesn't uh, start freaking out because he's in insurmountable pain because of all the burn marks on his back. Why didn't what did we hit? Where where why do none of us have oh shit. Correct. It's because we're all like dead or dying or we're dying and dead and dropped our guns because apparently that's something people don't cling to. We have a cannon down here. Oh <gasps> Yeah, the interesting thing about the cannon is I found it's like a direct line. You need like a direct line of sight to uh, use the cannon. Gotcha. Let's take care of that grizzly, though. Oh, God, it is a grizzly. Okay, it should bleed out. No, you're going to use an incendiary launcher on the grizzly bear. Missed. Hurry. Fire. Perfect shot. Okay, yeah, like I said, it's going to bleed out or er, okay. burn. Much fuller, quite useful. To give that green milk. Oh, now it's not freaking out. Like I said, it's currently bleeding, so. Another piece of art. Intimacy, number S11. On this work of an art of the gorge, the scene takes place inside a hamlet built near a cactus. Beauty 100. Should be one of those people that sells the uh, uh, TV advertisers, you know. It's like this uh, <laughs> this piece of jewelry has been neatly handcrafted by the finest Indian slave children. I don't know. I just I love reading those in that voice because it's just it's usually kind of out there anyway. And this very special edition, like uh, this one. Wait, why is why is Rappy sleeping out? I don't know. He's got a bed. I mean, you got a room. You got a bunk room over here if you wanted to. Until we get more heated rooms. We just need to get the entire compound under a roof. So that uh, waste heat isn't, well, wasted. Speaking of Robbie, hard cuboid on this work is an image of Robbie Stark crouching next to a fire and shivering uncontrollably. The scene takes place inside a snow-covered lurch forest. The work makes the viewer think of thirst. This artwork refers to Robbie freezing to death on the 1st of Juggist. The 5502. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. When aren't we freezing to death here? I, I know. There's kind of a time where we're just kind of thaw out a minute and then we're freezing again. No, Link's lost obedience. We don't really have anyone to spare for handling at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I know. We need those walls. Vortz, oh, Vortz resistance is at 5.2. Last time I checked it was at 10. Yeah, last time I saw it was 19. So it's coming down. What else does he need? Where ate off a meal, rattered it. Ah, oh, that's a that's a large pack of people. Uh, grenades. One guy's got some dynamite. They are, one thing about all these guys, they all have really short range weapons. Bunch of shotguns. Uh, bolt action seven. rifle, Scarlet. Uh, no. Oh yeah, she does have the shoot. Just, just one. That's just one bullet action rifle. Yeah, and then we got a machine gun, another machine gun. Uh, and there's only ten of them. Grenades, dynamite. And yeah, they're also sappers. Oh, so they can break through walls. Makes sense. Yeah, the walls that haven't even been built. Yep. They're sapping really well. We do have some actually, you know, cover now. Yeah. Drop a save, by the way. Oh yeah, let's drop a save. Only thing I'm worried about is those grenades and the dynamite. It's okay, we just uh, kind of spread out our people. Looks like we got on either side of this building over here. Oh, we have an incendiary launcher. Uh, I'm a little happier with that. Yeah, that should uh, happily dispatch the uh, people who uh, decide to... 
that's a good grouping. Ooh, nice. Ooh, yes. No, no, don't throw, don't throw. You may want to move. Oh, oh shit, that's Robbie. I got him. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good spot. Oh, I don't think this the explosion. Oh, wow. Hit him the doorway. Wait, I'm bad. running. Oh, psychic team. And we get a save, of course. <laughs> Azura, I might just strip him and then. Yeah. Strip him and leave him to freeze to death. Yep. Not hey, one of the. Uh... Yep. He's in a bad mood. I bet he is. Now, who is? Oh, uh. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Jack. I got shot in the torso. No immediate danger, but... Consume tea. Oh, the dynamite went off. Oh great, the raccoon's now eating the corpses. Good. So, with a heavy heart, I hate to tell you guys that the 1.2 patch just utterly destroyed our save. But join us next time on Mission Reloaded Gaming, where Funky, Jack, and Mog will go through hell again for your enjoyment. This is Jack, signing off. Peace. Peace.